Today we're talking about hormones and midlife and menopause and what we can do to feel blissful, feel joyful, feel empowered during menopause. And as I was getting ready for this podcast, I was thinking I'm going to get some lunch and I didn't have time for lunch because I got caught up with a couple business calls and I didn't get my smoothie made. So I'm drinking, I'm taking a couple capsules of Mighty Maca, sipping on my tea, just adding hot water to it all day um, from my stainless steel mug, girlfriend, Dr. Mug. And I grabbed, I was like, oh, wait, I was at KetoCon recently and I got this chocolate, botanical chocolate um, with GABA, turmeric, and cava. So to calm you down, to make you feel relaxed, all this amazing stuff. And I was thinking as a chocolate addict, you know, like when I could eat just chocolate all day, anyone else there just love chocolate? Do you know all the benefits of dark chocolate? I mean, ch dark chocolate has so many benefits. First of all, it, it does activate the bliss hormone. We're going to be talking about hormone bliss. It does activate our bliss hormone, can make us feel sexier, more sensual, grounded in our body. There's benefits for cardiovascular health. There's benefits for skin health. I mean, so many good benefits. So I am going to have a little bit of chocolate and introduce you to a very long time friend. So, um, this beautiful chocolate. Okay. Just one more time. Bliss out. Turmeric. It's by Yes Cacao has GABA, turmeric, cava. Anyway, um, GABA is a relaxer. Turmeric is an antioxidant and cava also helps with hormones. It's an adaptogen and it does help you relax. So <laughs> try not to make any more noise. So if you like chocolate, let me know, put that in the comment. What is your favorite chocolate and where are you listening in from? I love to hear that as well. So let me tell you about my friend that I'm introducing you to today. It, she is Dr. Karen Dunstan. She's an OBGYN and menopause and hormone expert. She runs a international and virtual practice and is the author of a couple of best-selling books. And she also, her and I go way back from our practices in Southeast Georgia. She had her medical practice in Savannah, Georgia. I was in Darien, Georgia. So McIntosh County and Brunswick, Georgia, Glenn County. And so I had two practices and I had been a researcher before I had gone to med school. And I had heard about this doctor in Savannah who was running some clinical research in women's health. And so we connected and um, our lives have intersected so many times since. We seem to run so many parallels. I had um, traveled around the world, done medicine in Egypt, in Egypt, and she also had done international travel and had, I believe it was in Egypt, also had studied. I mean, just all, it was just great intersections and all throughout our life. I think we've known each other um, 20, you know, Go, getting close to 20 years, if not quite 20 years already, have done research together, have consulted on patients together, and have worked in this online space together as well. So I want to introduce you to Dr. Karen Dunstan, an OBGYN who also lost a life-changing 100 pounds, fixed her adrenal fatigue, balanced her hormone, empowered her life, her business, her family and her mission with full heart, full integrity. And today she's here to talk to you and teach you more about hormone bliss. And so I'm excited, excited about that and excited to bring her on and introduce her to you. Hey, Karen, how are you? Hi, hi, Anna. Hi, everybody. So glad to be here with you today. Uh, it's good to be here with you too. So um, talk, like I want to you to share some, were you in Egypt? Like I remember that you were in <laughs> Egypt at some point, or did I make that up? You were in Africa or somewhere, but. Not Egypt yeah. yet, but I've been to Africa, China, Costa Rica, Bali, all kinds of places. Yeah. Very cool places. Yeah. We have that travel bug in common. We both love to travel. Yes, right now I'm in Argentina. Yeah, I actually uh, just gave up my dwelling and have become a full-time nomad because I have so many places on my bucket list. Maybe some of you watching have that too. I was like, in order to get to all of them, I need to do this 
get on it. So now I just travel from one place to another. So I can see all the cultures and places that I want to see. That is awesome. That is awesome. And right now you have a hormone bliss challenge. Tell us what, what this is and how it helps people. Yeah. So we won't be eating chocolate every day. And I'm in bliss with day. my chocolate bliss <laughs> right now. You enjoy your chocolate. But it's, it's about the, the fact that as women over 40, um, a lot of us suffer with myriad symptoms. I call it midlife metabolic mayhem, right? The 60 plus symptoms that you are experiencing or maybe some of your friends or family members. It's the thing that you all talk about at the book club or the church lunch. Women always gather in the corner and, oh, I can't, I can't sleep. I'm waking up at one o'clock in the morning every night. It's killing me because I'm not getting enough rest and I'm feeling so tired and then I'm having to drink coffee, right? Or somebody else says, oh my gosh, you know, Larry and I haven't been intimate in the past 10 years and I just don't know what's going to happen and nobody's talking about it, but I don't ever care if I have sex again. And maybe you've said that yourself, maybe your girlfriends do. So you fill in the blanks of the conversation, but I find everywhere I go, the topic of conversation for women over 40 is the health challenges that they're experiencing that they don't really have a language for or understand. And so they're looking to their girlfriends to find answers. And your girlfriends, unfortunately, have Dr. Google, and they're going to the same $30 HMO copay doctor in your neighborhood that you're going to. So they don't have answers either. Uh, maybe some of you found Dr. Anna, so you're getting the answers that you need. Um, but this is really the state of women's health over 40. Mainstream medicine is not providing us the appropriate information, what I call knowledge, tools, and support to know what's happening for us and to do something about it. So that was true for me as a board certified OBGYN. Here I was in my 40s and I suffered with obesity. I weighed 243 pounds. I had chronic fatigue. So I had energy to go to work and then I would come home and go to sleep. And that's about it. Even though I was a wife and a mom, I didn't really have the energy to participate in my kids' lives or be a great wife or even have friends of my own or creative pursuits. I had uh, depression and anxiety so severe at one point that I was on five psychoactive medications. My hair was falling out in clumps in the shower. Maybe that's you looking at your brush. I didn't care if I ever had sex again. I had no sex drive. And not good for a marriage, right? Not, not good for a marriage, not good for a relationship, you know, and it, right. it can start early, Karen. I mean, like, what's the age that you're seeing it start? Yeah, I mean, I used to say everybody over 40, but now I see people in their 20s with these things. I see people in their 30s. So really, we have to say all women we're suffering with these problems that mainstream medicine doesn't have an answer to. And like you said, Anna, they're deeply impactful. You know, it's one thing to say, I don't ever care if I have sex again, but it's another to look at the fact that you have a partner who that's part of most people's uh, partnership contract and they're, that's not being fulfilled. And we've talked about this, that divorce is often a consequence. And I think the, the, the group, the age group for women with the largest divorce rate is, going through the perimenopause and menopause. Um, so it has deeply impactful. And for those of you who don't know, divorce costs you half of everything you have. I know now from experience. Um, so it's, it's deeply impactful. And this is the conversation among women. You know, why are we spending our socializing time trying to figure out our health problems at the book club, right? It just shouldn't be. And the, the problem is that we doctors haven't given you the support that you need because we're not taught it, right? And neither was your doctor, unfortunately, taught the truth about your health and your hormones. And so that's why um, when I discovered the truth and I healed myself and I lost all the weight and I got off all the prescription medications and basically what you see now is not what you would have seen 15 years ago. Um, I, I decided to, to make my mission to teach other women about this. And the Hormone Bliss Challenge came out of that as the vehicle to give women the truth um, so that we can get together and talk like this together about real talk, truthful talk with data and statistics so you can understand 
why you have the symptoms you have, why you haven't healed, what you need to do to heal. If you need testing, what are appropriate tests? How do you read those tests? Because if you don't know how to read them, that's a big deal. And then what treatments are available and what do you need to do about it? Yeah. So I want to share this picture of Karen when that's when I knew you. So that is, that is you when I knew you and when I first met you, when we first started hanging out together, I mean, it's hard to believe, right? It's yes, really, I'm it's really hard to believe. And it's, you know, I mean, it's, it's been a journey and you share your journey and you share about the hormonal changes and, and how you've transformed. And so I think that's so important. I put the link in the chat, in the comments, and um, the link will be in the show notes so that you can check this out and check out her story, her information. And it's nice to say, okay, well, what can you achieve in, in seven, in a seven day um, challenge in a seven day program? And what do you see am, among your clients? What do you see them? Uh, yeah, their results? I mean, a comment comes to mind from a woman. Um, I'll call her Shelly, just for privacy. Um, who did this program um, about a month ago and she came on the Zoom. And so I asked everyone, I'd love for you to share what you've experienced in the program. And she said, you know, Kieran, the light has come back on in my life for me. I had no hope. And she had literally turned over every stone. She had Dr. Googled to death and listened to podcasts and read blogs. And she had worked in a lot of other programs where people are like, oh, take these supplements and you'll be fine. And it didn't help her. And she said, the light back is on for me in my life because I now have hope because I understand. So understanding, understanding has to come before any meaningful change in your life. If you don't have that understanding to stand on, you can't make it. And so she shared that and she said, now I get exactly why I've had the problems that I've had. I haven't been able to fix them with the solutions I've looked for. And I know the path forward to get where I want to be. So I'm not going to claim that we're going to fix, we're going to fix everything in seven days. That would be lying to you. But what you will have is the solid knowledge of what needs to happen and how do I do it and the, the knowledge, tools and support to do it so that you can get where you want to be. Um, and that's huge. I don't know about for you watching, but for me as a board certified OBGYN here, I was supposed to know more than anyone else about how to help women heal. I clearly, you saw the picture of me, did not know anything about that. Um, so unfortunately, your doctor doesn't either because they weren't taught either. So it was the knowledge that preceded the actions. If I didn't have the knowledge, I wouldn't have been able to take the actions. And so that's what I give you in that seven days is you have a clear map and a plan and you know why and what to do. Well, let's talk about this because we're both OBGYNs. And when I went to med school, there were 15 women in a class of 115 men. I don't know how many were in yours, but we were really like, when I went, we were a fraction. There was a fraction women physicians. And then in our OB residency, obstetric and gynecology residency, we were almost 40% uh, women. So more women were going into OB residencies, wanted more women because the demand was we listen, you know, listening to you, our, our clients listening to women, uh, patients, what they want. They wanted to see women physicians. And so there's a you know multiple levels of challenge in that right we're in a very uh, high paced fast aggressive um, um, challenging med school challenging residency program mm -hmm. as women having to prove ourselves all the time and and um, and do you know going that hundred miles an hour and that is that is what women do regularly and they do that through menopause so i think that now more women physicians are going through menopause than you know prior um, generations for sure that we're going to see women physicians hopefully standing up and say hey what we ta were taught doesn't work and let's check out this bioidentical hormone stuff that these other docs have been talking about, or these other people, patients have been demanding the ones that are looking good, that are feeling good, that are standing up and in their 
Yeah, I'm 57 this year. I don't know how old you are, Karen, but I'm 57 this year. And, you know, just standing up and going and continuing to set another another goal or enjoy, really enjoy their life, their grandkids, their, you know, have the energy to do these things and to continue to um, push limits, you know, be naughty, do all that good stuff. That's what yeah. I hope, you know, we're, we'll see a, tran a transformation in our, in our medical system. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I think in my med school, we probably were about 30% female. And then in my residency, actually, we were majority female. When I got there, there were 16 of us. Um, and we outweighed the women. It had it had changed over a few years before. And now I think it's a large majority of OBGYN residents are women. And I wish I could say that that makes us more enlightened. But I was as uh, willfully ignorant 20 years ago as a woman of hormonal problems as I, you know, as I could be, um, be because of the training which you and I both received. So I unfortunately come across majority of female physicians who were trained like we were trained who haven't had the pain that pushed me, for instance. And me, yeah. To or, and you, that's right, you went through it too, to find new answers, we're still believing the same nonsense. And I even came across this website, which I won't name, um, and they had some ads running on social media for menopause solutions. So I was like, oh, I want to know. So I clicked and I went to their website and it's a beautiful website and they have these pretty bottles and I'm thinking, oh, it's some supplements that could help. And I look and see, and it's Prozac that they got marketed in pretty supplement models, selling it on the internet. And I wow. just, I know I had to put my head in my hands and just go like, we women as physicians can be just as ignorant and misguided. So I wish that made us more enlightened. Unfortunately, it doesn't. So well, I think you, you hear to, um, yeah. an Oprah documentary, the Oprah um, menopause talk. Did you watch that yet? No. Oh, no. Where so Oprah is talking about menopause. The one thing um, yeah, I have got, I've got a full disclosure. I haven't watched it yet, but I, that's why I was asking to see if you'd watched it, but it was, it was really heavy, you know, heavy prescription hormone laden. And I think this is, th there's a piece to it. I always say, you know, it takes more than hormones to fix our hormones. That's a piece of it. But yeah. without the diet and lifestyle, I mean, you just can't, prescribe away a bad diet and lifestyle. And in, and as good as we may think it is, the changes that our bodies go through in perimenopause, menopause need something different, need a change, need a shift. We need to pause, hence my last book, Menu Pause. We need to pause certain things in our diet and in our lifestyle in order to be fully embodied women, empowered women. And so I was curious if, you know, how you you know, took that or your take. Yeah. On I mean, it's so true. I have heard Oprah quoted as saying estrogen changed her life after she went through menopause, that she was a mess and estrogen did change her life. Now, having said that, I would love to hear this talk. So I'll have to find it. Um, you cannot prescribe away bad diet and lifestyle. And what I will say also with that is most of us who think we are doing right with diet and lifestyle are not <laughs> right unfortunately so that's a big part of why you teach it's a big part of what i teach there are different things that your body needs as you age and if you're not aware of that and you're not giving her what she needs she's not going to give you what you need she's not going to help you sleep all night she's not going to give you a good sex drive she's not going to make your mood balanced she can't um there's certain biologic requirements so Try as we might, I know some people who say, I don't need sleep, I'll sleep when I'm dead, right? And they just keep going and I'll just drink coffee in the morning to wind up and wine at night to wind down. And, you know, they don't want to accept the biologic necessities of being a woman at any age, let alone a, a, an older age. And unfortunately, your body doesn't care what you think or what your beliefs are. It has its requirements. And if you don't give her what she needs, then she's not going to give you what you need. And you can try to medicate it away every which way. But at some point, I think that we have a reckoning where we have to decide as women, um, 
do I want to go medicated into the night living a half lived life? Or do I want to take some time out to educate myself, read menopause, read any of the books available, go to a program like the Hormonalist Challenge, do may avail yourself of all the resources that are available from doctors like us who have hit the wall and found our way back who can help guide you. Um, and then live a more, like you said, did you say mischievous life? Miss naughty, naughty. Naughty, naughty. Like you should have the energy and clarity to be as naughty as you want to be. <laughs> I'm 58 now, by the way. And you should be able to be naughty and travel all over Africa and have a 28 year old boyfriend if you want, right? That's what you should be able to do. <laughs> that's what you want. Are you telling me that's what you have, Karen? <laughs> yes. And that's what you, you should get to choose, right? If that's what you want to do. Now, I'm not saying that's for everybody, right? Not everyone's as adventurous as I am. But whatever it is, name the thing. Like I tell people, getting the health that you desire is not first even about getting the knowledge it's understanding why you want it because it's not easy to get anything of value in this life hopefully you all know that by now right if it comes easy it goes easy it's not that valuable but you know re having a baby how hard is that and then raising that that child into a, a competent and happy adult it's effort. So the same is with uh, your health. So you've got to understand why, because that's what's going to carry you through the challenges and difficulties of getting there, because invariably, there are going to be some, um, you know, if it were easy to eat healthy in the ideal way, everyone would do it. But you've got to understand some things and do some things. It's not just going to fall in your lap from McDonald's. So um, understanding your why. And so for me, a big part of my why is because I want to live my life to the fullest. I want to travel the whole world. I want to meet people in their country and every culture. I want to be able to uh, participate with people of all ages, right? These are some of my values and things that I appreciate. So for you, what is it that you really want in life? You know, not the things you tell people because you think that's what they want to hear or that you can have that but the things you lay at, in bed at night and you think about, oh, if I could make, wave my magic wand, I would make it look like this, right? Those things, those are the whys you gotta uncover. I think that, I mean, this is so powerful, but I would tell you, you know, cause um, you know, there's always, we, you know, uh, um, I will say workaholism um, is a really sneaky addiction. And it's in, in many ways. And I'll tell you recently, because we were talking beforehand and I was like, I'll tell you later, Karen, but I'm gonna tell you now that I was in, um, that I was, I mean, I was burning out. I running my business, a mom to my multi-generational family, caring and, and sole provider. And I have my, and I recognize that like I have my work family and that's important to me my work family, my client family, my patients. I mean, I care about them. I want them to do well. I want to help them. My, you know, my girls and my extended family, I mean, people got a lot of people that call me mama doctor and I love that. And, but yet there, if you're doing all those things and you're not looking inward and filling your own tank, that's where we get into trouble. And that's like beyond the hormones, right? It takes more than hormones to fix your hormones, but that's a piece of it. The nutrition, the supplements, we have to do the things that you were uh, mentioning, like to sleep, to walk, to move, to get out into nature. So I did think about, I did a lot of thinking about this while I was in my, um, I was having my mental health break. So I said I was going to uh, go and um, my explorations led me to Tulum, Mexico. So I find myself in Tulum, Mexico in the jungle, and I really didn't know what was in store for me. But um, had contacted a friend of a friend. And she's like, Oh, I got you covered. I arranged everything for you. And, and she did she arranged like mud mask, a tamoscal, which is like going into the womb of the mother, a sweat lodge, but Mayan style. And, and it was really nice. So I had this experience of being in the womb of the mother, so to speak, in this, in, and then the, um, 
everything is very ceremonial where I was. And so like everything has meaning from the cacao ceremony, eating a piece of chocolate or, you know, understanding where that came from to be very thankful going into the womb of the mother, the Tamu's cow and the four elements, fire, earth, water, and air, those four elements being together. And to feel like the, the heat and the extensive heat, et cetera. And I'm so used to infrared sauna and stuff. I'm like, bring it on, right? Bring it on. That was all good stuff. The ice bath afterward, hot, not so good. But um, but then I did, the, I had this experience, which was, um, you know, because you have the expression, no pain, no gain. So it was led into doing, and this was part of the, I didn't know this was going to be part of my week there, but was a ayahuasca ceremony and by a bee shaman named Mitch, Michelle. And he is also a bee shaman, which is very cool. So after he gives you a spoon of the ayahuasca from, and this ayahuasca is from Peru, um, he gives you a, a teaspoon of, of the honey. And he said, you know, life is intended to be sweet. And, um, and I know from many friends, colleagues, et cetera, and reading that ayahuasca can be very violent and you can have crazy hallucinations, crazy, you know, nausea, vomiting, all that good stuff. And mine was really a gentle experience. So I was like, oh, well, maybe I'm just, I'm, I, I need more. So I'm like, okay, can you give me some more? And, uh, and he did. And it was still a really, like, it was amazing. It was a gentle experience. There was a couple minutes I was shaking and it was a little bit, but I didn't have all these crazy visuals or anything. And I, I, but I felt very connected to the fire. We had a fire I felt connected to mother earth earth, air, my spirit, you know, I was praying the entire time to my spiritual practices. And what came to me is that, you know, the, 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 the motto that I've driven a lot of my life with is no pain, no gain. You got to push it to the limit. You got to like, get up at 5 a.m. You've got to work till you drop. You got to do the hardest thing. If you're going to work out, work out really hard and all this like no pain, no gain. And here I had this amazing experience, no matter like, however much it was gentle. Like I could relate that, you know, you don't have to suffer to have transformation, to have healing. You don't have to suffer to feel connected to do. You don't have to do, you can be. And that being piece, that realization, I'm still sitting with it because again, old habits die hard, feel like I have to bust through a wall every day. You don't, you can be, and that's also what the shaman is like, that we can learn a lot from the bees in community. First of all, they live in community and they work together. If there's like, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, it was just so fascinating in so many ways. If you guys want to hear more about that, let me know, but definitely off on a tangent, but it doesn't have to be no pain, no gain. And as women, we can be gentle with ourselves. We can experience the gentleness. We don't have to force. It is like, what is the season that we are in right now? And how can we trust our intuition? How can we nurture our feminine? How can we nurture our masculine? What's out of balance that needs to be focused on to recenter, to regain that balance? And it was really very, you know, a very lovely experience for me. And a it good sounds reminder. Yes, it sounds lovely. And yeah, Mama Ayahuasca, she can be a taskmaster, but I love it when she's gentle too. And and I do love this concept of being and not doing. I think that we as a culture have been so focused on uh, the doing, right? This is how you do, you succeed and you, you go balls to the walls, right? All the time. And, you know, for me, that actually ended up getting me to hit the wall and something I've become interested in and I'm studying now um, to become certified in is human design. Do you know about human design? I know some things about human design. What is this um, you're referring to? Yeah. So human design, um, it's a, actually a, a system of, that explains how your energy body works, right? So we have a physical body uh, that has an anatomy, right? We have 10 fingers, we have two arms, we have an anatomy to our physicality. 
but we also have an anatomy to our energetic body. I'm sure everybody realizes that you're not just this hunk of meat sitting on a chair. You have an energy that animates your physical body and that energy has an anatomy. And most of you probably were taught that it's a seven centered chakra anatomy, but actually it's nine chakras and it has an individual pattern with what we call gates that are unique to you that determine how your body uses and runs energy. And so you can, you can do a chart for free online, a human design chart. You can get readings with human design certified practitioners. I'm not one yet, but hopefully in the next couple of years. Um, and then it helps you understand how your body runs energy. And one thing I learned about mine is that I don't run energy like everyone else. And I'm not built to work a 60, 80, 100 hour work week like I used to work. And that's why it helped me, made me hit the wall. And so to me, this ties into hormones because this is where a lot of our adrenal uh, drainage goes to, right? Our cortisol when we're working against the way our energy anatomy works. And I don't mean to get too esoteric for everybody listening, but just all this to say that I learned that my job is to be mm -hmm. and not to do. And so when I honor that, then I have the energy uh, and my gifts come more easily. And I don't know, maybe some of you listening, maybe you're working and contrary to how you run energy. So it's just something to think about. Maybe you do need to look more at being than doing. So I love that that brought it, that up for you. Yeah, yeah. And then a visual for that too. It's like be the flower, not the bee going from flower to flower. So there's that that piece too is, um, is, is uh, I love that. I love that a uh, visual too, is just to, to receive, right. To receive and, um, to allow yourself to be whatever it is. So, oh my goodness, I know I can, I've got to catch up with you for some more girlfriend conversation with chocolate and tea. My yes. daughter Amira made this tea with hibiscus and she knows I like bergamot. So some, other flowers and chamomile. She's making her own little tea bags, which is part of her graduation favor. Cause as she's graduating from SMU this weekend, I'm so excited. So we're, um, she made teas. I thought that was so sweet. So herbal tea. It's just uh, amazing. Lisa says, love that about being and not doing being not doing and and i think there's a lot in that a lot in that lesson so karen tell our audience where they can find you i put a link here i'm going to put it again in the chat you guys can use that mm -hmm. link that lets uh karen know that i recommended you and um this is where you're coming from watching our show here and I appreciate that. So click that link, check out Dr. Kieran Dunstan and her hormone bliss challenge. Yeah, I hope you'll join me if you are any age of a woman. It really doesn't matter. The, the, the issues are universally female. Um, and you will get some real talk and real understanding about why you're dealing with the symptoms you're dealing with, why you haven't been able to fix the problems you've had, and most importantly, what to do about it. So you have a clear roadmap to the health that you want. We will talk about being and not doing and how I've transformed my life. Because first, what happened for me was the health change, right? And then I had the energy to make the life changes that now support me in uh, being and not doing because that just wasn't working for me. Um, so I hope you will join me and lots of other ladies dealing with similar problems like you are. So you can get out of hormonal poverty. I know we haven't gotten to talk about that, but we will. I will teach you what is hormonal poverty, right? If you're a woman over 40, you are living in hormonal poverty to one degree or another. And by the time you're over 50, you definitely are. And um, that's kind of like living in an impoverished home, which I wouldn't wish for you, right? So I don't want you to have impoverished hormones. And I'll teach you how to get out of hormonal poverty into hormonal prosperity, which is where everything that you want happens, right? Great sleep, great energy, the weight that you want, the hair, sex drive, gut health, mood, memory, cognitive function, and helps to prevent disease, right? And premature death. Most people aren't aware that um, when they're in hormonal poverty, they're, uh, that 
death date that comes on your tombstone at the end of the day starts coming a little sooner and that there are things you can do about it to push it back so that you have a lifespan and a vitality span that's as long as you want um, to live the way you want to live and enjoy it. So I will give you all my secrets that I have learned that I've used for myself that I've used with thousands of women that I've worked with. And uh, we will have a great time and you'll really learn how to be more of a being than a doing. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Dr. Karen Dunstan for being on this show once again, and um, appreciate all you're doing in the world and the heart that you're doing it with. And um, I want to thank you guys for sharing and commenting and letting me know, like, what do you want to hear from the girlfriend doctor next? What topics do you want to hear on the girlfriend doctor show? Sometimes I'm like, Oh, well, I feel like I've covered every topic from hormones, testing, osteoporosis, estrogen, progesterone, all of these, you know, uh, all of these topics. And it really does help if you can put in the chat um, or comment on my Instagram specifically, it's always checking things there since that's where I spy on my granddaughter. But or let let me know, you can email us at team at drannacabeca.com. What topic do you want to hear from? Um, what do you need more from? What do you need more help and support around? And things like this, like the guests that I have, I have completely vetted them. And I know Dr. Karen's program is good. Her challenge is good. She sees patients as well virtually. And um, and I'm here to help. So I love being your girlfriend, doctor. Till next time.